Welcome to Technocracy News and Trends. Patrick Wood here, Editor-in-Chief. And today we're going to take a look at technocracy again. That's what this website is all about. You know that technocracy.news is the only authoritative source of information on technocracy on the entire Internet. You can search the world, if you will, but you'll find that there's no other site like technocracy.news. Either I'm crazy or the rest of the world is crazy, but I will not give up on this meme because it is so painfully obvious looking back at history that technocracy is the real deal, that technocrats are working towards global domination, that technocracy will bring about scientific dictatorship, that all of the people that are embedded in big tech around the world are fully behind and fully supporting this concept of technocracy. Looking back historically is painful for some. It was almost painful for me, but I did it, and I found the whole story of historic technocracy and followed it forward in time through today, and now we see the fruit of their endeavors to engulf the world in a scientific dictatorship. The fact that a small group of technocrats could shut down the global economic system is absolutely amazing. While we're just coming out of the lockdown in America, we now have another catastrophe that's beset us, namely the nationwide riots and protests that are taking place. But it's interesting to note that both the Great Panic of 2020 and the Great Protest of 2020 both have common roots, in two ways at least. Number one, the same people seem to be sponsoring both instances. Secondly, they started over some very small and minor issue by comparison and blew into something completely disproportionate to their origins. In the case of the Great Panic of 2020, we had a virus that broke out in China before it even hit the continent of North America or Europe, computer models were already working overtime to suggest that millions of people were going to die and that the only way to stop it was to do what they said to do. The policies they threw out, oddly enough, things like social distancing, things like wearing face masks, things like lockdown of the economy, things like um, shutting down schools from top to bottom. All of these policies came out of the same crowd that proposed the panic in the first place. These were technocrats. These were people who were committed to the United Nations. They're committed to sustainable development, which is had a beef with, tech, with uh, capitalism and free enterprise for decades. The United Nations has sworn to overthrow capitalism and free enterprise. So the people that started the pandemic were a clique of technocrats who had a vested interest in shutting down the global economy. Well, what happened? The global economy got shut down. Well, you can tip the hat to them. They were successful in their strategy. You have the same type of thing now happening with these protests in America. Just as we're starting to pull out of it, all of a sudden, we're shutting down again. People are running around in just abject fear that the violence is going to come to their neighborhood, to their store, to their storefront, to their communities, to the suburbs. And they're sworn to come to the suburbs as well. The people that are backing groups like Antifa, that is the anti-fascist organization, which is primarily Marxist-oriented, groups like this are being sponsored by certain global elite interests like George Soros, who's been documented to have funded some of these organizations, and they're acting in concert at the same time across the country and even across the world now to accomplish a societal breakdown. They're trying to rip the fabric of our country apart while we're still busy sorting out the economic fallout from the great lockdown, the great panic of 2020 over the pandemic. 
This is a coordinated effort. I want to make that clear. This is not something that just happened. Oh, we always have the bad luck. Oh, it's just another black swan that came along. That's not the way it is. It may be that there actually was a virus that was scary that was identified in China that led to an opportunistic technocrat group to take advantage of it. And the same thing could be true with the death of the black man uh, at the hands of a white policeman. But... As tragic as that is, it has nothing to do at this point with what's happened with all of the looting, the murders, the destruction of private property, the instilling of pure fear into the hearts of men and women in America. It has nothing to do with the original source at this point, and I think most people recognize that. So I'm going to read a very short passage from my book, Technocracy Rising, and I want you to consider what's happened here. We're under a full press attack from all sides. It's an ingenious attack in a way because it's very effective and it's working. We can't do much about it now individually, but there's going to come a time when Americans, that is true Americans, need to rise up and make their voices heard. I'm not sure how that's going to happen. Censorship is running rampant. Big tech companies like Facebook and Twitter, Google, are all acting in concert to shut down free speech. So I'm not sure at this point how America is going to tackle this problem. But I do know that Americans are resourceful. And it's my prayer that we will be resourceful again you remember back to the days of World War II when it was first uh, just really getting started. It was the bleakest time in that century up to that point. Very few people had any idea how we're going to get out of that one. They saw Europe engulfed in flames. All of a sudden, Pearl Harbor got attacked. The United States got thrown into a war. How would we get out of it? We're fighting a formidable enemy who was executed a successful sneak attack on our country, and nobody had answers. Everybody was just like, well, I don't know how we're going to get out of this, but here we go. And they went into war, and they came out victorious in the end. Well, maybe we're just fortunate back then. Maybe just the sign of the times, the way things were, the way Americans responded, who knows, we just got through it. Nevertheless, I believe that Americans got resourceful and creative when the chips were down. The chips are down now, again. We have a new type of enemy. It's not an enemy with battle tanks. It's not an enemy necessarily with airplanes and missiles and ICBMs. But it's an enemy with an algorithm. It's an enemy who believes that only science can determine what is really true in the world. All other views are excluded including Judeo-Christian ethics, biblical worldviews, etc., are all excluded from the discussion as being ridiculous. Well, this is not the America that will accept this in the end. And when they see that this new enemy is coming after us with scientific tools, using science as a weapon, to cause us to do what they want them to do, what they say they want us to do. This won't fly well in the end with the American public. We can only hope that America rises up and takes a stand against technocracy and technocrats is bringing it to us. Now, <clears throat> I want to read just a short section of my book. It's actually from the conclusion. Some of you have actually purchased this book and you've seen it and you've read it. I've had a lot of great comments on it. I always challenge people, by the way, uh, scholars included, to bring to me evidence that this is stuff is not true. I'd love to have people that are authoritative in their field come and say, you know, you're wrong here and you're wrong there, or you misquoted this or something. But in all the time I've been speaking and writing about technocracy, nobody really has come forward to offer any counter-criticism. That tells me that what I've written stands that is true, that is accurate, 
and that my assessment is correct as well. So let me read the short passage to you again. This is on page 206 uh, in the conclusion of the book. When studying the progression of Nazi Germany leading up to Hitler's assumption of power, I have often theorized that there was very likely a specific point in time when he realized that he had all the political, military, organizational, and economic power necessary to declare himself dictator. Hitler had declared his intentions in his 1925 book, Mein Kampf, which was mostly... Um, ignored at the time because Hitler was viewed as a troublemaking rabble-rouser who was serving time in jail for what he claimed were political crimes. But Hitler had a dream and a strategy to get there. And then he embarked on implementing that strategy in 1933 after he clawed and connived his way into power. He pulled the plug and declared himself dictator. There was nothing anyone could do about it at that point. To oppose him meant certain death or imprisonment. His work, his strategy, like moving the pieces on a chessboard, had resulted in a doomsday checkmate. My point is that it didn't happen by accident or even by a series of random events where one day he just woke up and thought, I think I will announce my dictatorship after lunch today. Rather, Hitler was certainly gathering pieces of his empire all along, analyzing and plotting his victory with excruciating detail. As the necessary assets were lined up in a row under his control, Hitler knew exactly what it would take to get to the top. And he knew that he would know when he had arrived. Well, that day did arrive, and history was changed forever. Based on this thinking, if today's technocrats are meticulously working toward a scientific dictatorship and applying a specific strategy to get there, wouldn't you think that they have a specific list of criteria that must be met before game over can be called? Wouldn't you think that they are comparing such a list to actual progress they are making in the world? Wouldn't you think that they are monitoring their progress and will recognize when the list has been fulfilled? If you can see my point here, that there are only two questions left, and here is the punchline of this particular point. When that day comes, when that day comes, will the technocrats have the guts to shut down the old world order and simply declare the system as dictator? And if so, how long will it take them to act? I believe very firmly, based on my entire study of technocracy and economic issues dating back to the early 1970s, that technocracy is engaged right this minute in a coup d'etat that will attempt to conquer the entire planet for the sake of establishing a technocracy. I don't think there's any doubt about it anymore. Anybody who has the power to shut down the global economic system in the first place has something going for them, you have to admit. Not everybody could do that. President Trump couldn't do that if he wanted to. In fact, there's no group of leaders in the world that could political leaders at least, that could cause such a thing to happen. But the technocrats did. And now, just as we're getting used to the idea that our economic system has been ripped apart, ripped to shreds in America, with unemployment now approaching that of the Great Depression, in some pockets even greater than the Great Depression, we're just starting to figure those things out, and boom, we come into a period of Radical civil unrest across America. This has also been predicted, by the way. But these Marxist forces that seem to be working to shred the social fabric of America now with these protests and murders, and this is pure terrorism, folks. It really is. They're not the terrorists from the Mideast necessarily, but this is terrorism within 
our own borders designed to tear the social fabric of our country apart, designed to cause Americans to give up their will to fight, to give up their will to struggle for their own country. These two events are coordinated very carefully. That is the pandemic and these protests across America. And you say, how do I know that? Look at the funding. Where is the money coming from? These people across the country don't have funds to launch a nationwide protest. Antifa does not have the type of funds just somehow by membership dues or something or going around neighborhoods collecting $2 donations. You can't launch a nationwide protest on that kind of money. Institutional money has entered the scene. And we know for a fact it's been documented now, for instance, that George Soros has contributed to groups like Antifa to fund protests, leftist protests, Marxist protests around the country to cause destruction and the breakdown of American society. This is a fact. And we can see this money pouring in just looking at the tens of thousands of people now who are rioting across America and tearing everything apart. We see this now as nothing more than an extension of the technocratic coup d'etat that started with the Great Panic of 2020 and the pandemic, and that now phase two is fully implemented to destroy the social fabric of America. They're doing a good job. The main point that I want to make here is that these two different, very different strategies are coordinated by the same people. In order to make my point here again, I'll go back to one of the original architects of technocracy, Thorsten Veblen, way back in roughly 1922, 1925. He said that technocracy, that's the era that we're in now, would naturally supersede the Marxist, socialist, communist paradigm. He viewed those as necessary stepping stones to get to the end goal, which was technocracy. Zbigniew Brzezinski came along in 1970 while he was a professor at Columbia University and said exactly the same thing in his book, Between Two Ages, America's Role in the Technotronic Era. He concluded that Marxism was a necessary stepping stone to his technotronic era, which is technocracy. I read the book again after I discovered historic technocracy, and sure enough, it's the same thing. They fed this subsequently to the United Nations, by the way, and it became sustainable development or green economy or Green New Deal is a number of terms now that describe it. But the whole concept of technocracy was then fed to the United Nations, which took it to the world. And now the world is thoroughly engulfed in this sustainable development mantra but it requires the death of capitalism and free enterprise to implement. So who's outgunning for capitalism and free enterprise? Well, it's the technocrats. They're the ones that have pulled the strings to get us this far. They're the ones that are standing behind with financing, with moral support, with uh, resources to fan the flames of the civil unrest that we have in our nation today. This is not a Marxist takeover of our nation, my friends. Don't even go there. Don't even think it, because that is not the case. The Marxists have become the useful idiots of the technocrats. They don't have a clue that they're going to be the first ones that get thrown under the bus when technocracy gains complete control of the global system. They don't see this. They don't see the hand above them manipulating them. They don't see who's executing and creating the policies to be executed all around the world. They're blind to it. But they're the ones that are going to be the first destroyed if technocracy wins completely and takes over. This is not a communist revolution 
in America. It is designed, however, and being used by those technocrats to tear our country apart. It's the great destroyer. It's the great deconstructor of society in America. That's all. Nothing more. And if these elements are successful, and at this point, who knows, they could be, maybe not, but if they're successful, when the ashes and the cars and everything else are still smoldering, out of those disasters, technocrats will rise. People will beg even for technocrats to come in and restore order to society. We've seen this happen in many countries around the world in the last 20 years. These technocrats will gladly at that point come in and say, well, it took you long enough to ask us, didn't it? So you see where this is headed? Technocracy right now has a vice grip on the entire planet. And yet, everybody still seems to think, oh, it's a communist takeover. Oh, it's going to be communism, baby. It's going to be socialism. It's going to be this, that, or the other. I'm sorry. It's not. It's going to be technocracy. You'll see in the end, as we go along, we'll continue to discuss this. I'm not going to let go of this story because it's just simply too big to let go. So I hope that you'll follow along with me. I hope, by the way, that you'll share this information with people that you know. At least give them food for thought, please. They need to see, they need to hear what's going on. If you're watching this video on YouTube, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on Podbean, you can do the same thing. You can give it a like and you can subscribe. Podbean has a great app that runs on a smartphone or a, even on a tablet that you can dial in to uh, any number of podcasts and very quickly bring one up to view or to listen to. And you can go to technocracy.news and join the mailing list. That's important to do. I'll just take a second to say that on technocracy.news, we're approaching the 4,000th story that has been posted there. I have carefully curated every story that got posted over a period of time. We're almost up to 4,000. All of these stories are fully indexed and fully categorized and make for very easy location and research, etc. If you want to know anything about technocracy, you can likely find it at Technocracy News and Trends at this point. And I encourage you to go and explore the search engine there and just find out what types of little treasure troves there are there. Do some research of your own. And these articles that I posted, some are written by me and other people that I know personally, but I picked articles from all over the planet that relate to technocracy because I want you to see what they are saying. It's not my word that counts here. It's what they are doing, what they are saying. And when you see what they are saying and planning, it takes on a whole new light because now it's coming to fruit and the things that they said five years ago, that's what they're doing today. Well, I'm Patrick Wood for Technocracy News and Trends. We'll see you next week.